This is as good as it gets. Hey everyone. So we're back and my uh, re-entry into this comic book hobby is, I guess, officially starting today. I've dabbled buying a couple new books here and there, just checking things out, but I never really focused on anything. I went a couple of other things, a little bit of spec and that kind of thing, just to reintroduce myself, but I never really started looking into books that um, I'd like to start continuing on a monthly basis and pretty much uh, put in a pull box and that kind of thing. So today was... Uh, new comic book day. Wednesdays are always new comic book days. Uh, you're probably seeing this recording either on a Thursday or a Friday. But I decided to go into a comic book store and start out as if I'm brand new, trying to introduce myself to some books. And came back with a big haul right here. And Hoping that some of these books are books that I'm going to continue to uh, buy and to enjoy for uh, years to come, or at least in the next few months to come, um, and I could really get myself into some of the newer stuff. Because up until now, obviously, I've been into um, rebuilding my old collection and uh, putting together some runs and that kind of thing. So now I'm going to be basically putting myself into the uh, new comic realm and. So I got a bunch of new stuff. Some stuff is not exactly new, and you'll see what I mean by when I it's not exactly new. Uh, and some of the stuff was just really so interesting I had to pick up, and you'll see what I mean. So, I'm not sure how to do this the best way, but I'm gonna pull them out one at a time so you can see what I got. And you know what? I'm gonna start off with the stuff that I thought was fun that I picked up. So one of the things that has been really hot late and really interesting, and it wasn't really around uh, the way it exists today in the past, and uh, those are the facsimiles that I've been, been putting together. So I picked up a few facsimiles uh, because they were on the shelves. They looked in great condition. They're books that I don't have in, or that I would desire to have in my current collection. So I picked them up for the sure reason that I'd like to be able to have them sit, take their place in my collection up until I could find the originals in the best possible way. And the thing that's really cool about the facsimiles is that uh, they're exact reprints, exact reprints, even down to the commercials and the advertisements that are put in there. The only difference is are the barcodes and the price that's uh, that's put in there. So let me just get started because you probably don't want to hear me keep rambling. So the first one I picked up was Tuma Dracula number 10. book I never had and I would like to have. This one is in a beautiful shape. It gives me the opportunity to have something in case I ever want to display it or anything like that. I have it. And then this is a book obviously I want to this is one of my grill type of books that I want to pick up at one point or another. Probably I'll end up getting it no more than a 1 or 2.0 but that would be enough for me to be satisfied to have it in my collection. If I could get it at a higher grade at a reasonable price or affordable price, I would definitely do that. So this is definitely my next place keeper. This is another one. Crazy thing about this book was that I, I had multiple copies of this and one of my boxes that are lost in history are my Hulk boxes. So I'm annoyed that I don't have a clean copy. I'm annoyed that it costs an arm and a leg to get an original good copy of it now. So this is taking its place until I can find something reasonable that's going to place. And by the way, the, what I meant by exact facsimiles is the fact that you have the barcode that's different. It's a longer barcode, more modern barcode, and the price. These are the only real significant differences that you see in these books. Everything else in there is pretty original and it's great. And the copies, uh, the, the paper on the inside is uh, not newsprint, it's glossy. Next book I picked up was a Wolverine. I do have a copy of this. However, I picked this up because it is so super sharp, so clean, 
and I'm actually considering uh, sending this over to CGC or CBCS, CGCS or whatever it's called, uh, to uh, have it in a slab and actually display it because the copy I have is not that clean. Here's another book that got lost in my history of comics and I'm not going to pay $1,000 to get a new copy so this is going to be my copy to take its place until I can find something at a reasonable price to take its place with all my originals. Everybody knows X-Men 266, Gambit number one, uh, first appearance, blah blah blah, controversial whether it's appearances or not, but whatever. Uh, this is another book that I got just like the Wolverine number one that you saw. I got this for a very similar reason. I do have a copy of this. It's not in the greatest condition, mid to maybe mid higher, mid grade for original. This is super crisp. I think I want to slab this and put it in a display just to put it in my um, hobby room. Okay, so it looks like that was the end of the reprints, facsimiles that I was telling you about. Now we get into the new books. First in line was this book. Time Before Time, number one. So I got this because it seems interesting. I saw a lot of people picking it up. There was only a couple copies left when I got there. I got there in the midday, so that's usually a good sign. It was brand new to the day. Um, figure it's a brand new story, brand new comic. Great job being off point. Hopefully, it's a great story, and I'll put it in a pull box for in the future. This number two that I got, Silver Coin number two. I heard amazing reviews about Silver Coin number one. Unfortunately, I got too late into the game to figure that one out, so I got Silver Coin number two, and hopefully, it's just as good as what they say the first one was, and I'll definitely have that in my run if that's the case. And on top of that, Besides that, I'm going to try to see if they come out with a second printing of Silver Coin number 2 to be able to pick that up at a reasonable number. That way I could, you know, at least get to understand the story. So this is another book that has been having a tremendous amount of hype. I don't know if it's for the better or for the worse. There are a lot of mixed reviews. Haven't heard if it's good or not, but that's Heroes Reborn number 1. This is not this month's copy or this week's copy, but I picked this up because... I noticed that number two came out so let me get one and two read them they're both at you know cover price and if it's a good story I'll complete the run I just don't I just hope that this is not gonna be one of those situations where you basically have a story that you have to pick up a million other books that are crossing over to all the Marvel titles in order to understand it I'm hoping that this is uh, self-contained and if you choose to buy some of the other Marvel books it just adds to the story but you won't be lost without them I hope because if that's the case I'm gonna stop her right after that this is another book that has had a lot of hype Noctera this is not this week's copy they actually had two and three but I'm not really sold on this yet I did hear a, good, a couple good things so I pick it up issue one if I like it I'll go back and I'll pick two and three up but the art's great can't go wrong with that. And here's another one. Proctor Valley Road. So, I heard a lot of really good things about that. Plus, in a recent pull box that I uh, did, I got a copy of a variant edition with a big bowl on the front. Really great cover. So, I'm like, you know what? I have that already. Let me let me get the first couple issues. See what it's all about. If I like it, I'll continue. So, I picked up one. One number two and number three by the way if you guys have any suggestions about books that would be really cool to pick up or get started in please let me know I don't want to get into the, the situation where I, I'm trying to jump in on a run that has already caught fire and I, it's gonna cost me an arm and leg to get all the back issues on it I want to start off with everything at cover price you know, the only stuff I really want to pay more than cover price on that, that I actually pay the value on is books that I feel that are uh, important to my runs, to my collection, Silver Age, older stuff, Bronze Age, that really fit well with what I have. The new stuff, I'm actually going to go in with the mindset that if it's not at uh, cover price, I'm not taking it. 
So here's another thing. I think these are up at cover price. This has been getting a lot of attention. Carnage, black, white, and black. There's like a million variant covers of these, but they had these in stock. Again, these are not this week's, but I wanted to make sure that, again, they were on the new car, new book rack. So I got number one, number two, number two. Really nice covers, by the way. And number three. Now this one, they had two different versions. This one, I liked better when I picked it up. And I just realized that it's a variant edition. So I don't know what that means, if it's anything important, but I got it. I'm not gonna get into this whole crazy spec thing of getting every single variant cover. I'm not doing that. I'm gonna pick up whichever cover I like best from a certain issue. And if there's something significant about it, I might pick up one or two of the other covers. So here's another interesting scenario of what I did. Okay, so let me let me kind of give you guys a look at these out so you guys can understand what I did. Probably already recognize these books. So the Department of Truth has been a very big book, and a lot of people have had a lot of good things to say about it. So I needed to dip my toe into this one. So I got the first uh, five issues in a trade paperback. Gave me a good opportunity to be able to purchase uh, to purchase them at a very low cost because the first issues are on fire right now. And I got them all five for $9.99. Go try to get the original copies at $9.99. Good luck with that. And when I was looking at the newer copies that they had, I did run into an issue of number three and they had a variant edition of it. Now, I did pick these up, one, because I'd like to be able to have all the original books if I could get them at cover price, and at the same time, because of all the hype, all the craziness, this was kind of a spec play that's not going to cost me a lot of money. Cool cover, this is the original, this is, this, this is the original cover, no, no, this is the original cover, and then this is the variant cover, so I got them, didn't cost me an arm and a leg in order to, to get it. But, I like completionists, so eventually I'll start getting it. Unfortunately, they didn't have issue 6, and I'm in the process of trying to track down issue 6. But, I was able to find issue 7. And issue 8. So, at least this gives me a good start with this run. I'll know what I'm reading. It didn't cost me a lot to get into it. And if it's really good, it'll go into my pull box. So I picked up a book of Immortal Hulk. I heard a lot of great things. Hulk was one of my favorite characters growing up. This was the earliest copy I could find at cover price. So that's why I picked it up. And we'll see if I like it. I like the tone. I'll uh, continue to pick it up. If not, and then I'll try to accumulate as many back issues as I can at reasonable prices. I'm sure I'm not going to find a number one, number two, or anything like that anywhere close to cover price, but you never know, maybe a second edition comes out, physical printing, or if I'm able to find something really, really affordable as far as getting the first edition, I'll pick it up. And it depends on how on fire it gets. Another book that I picked up that because of all the years that I haven't been into the uh, hobby, is Amazing Spider-Man number one. Again, cover price, it's a first printing. I'm sure nothing is gonna be breaking my back as far as uh, uh, maybe breaking uh, breaking uh, new ground in this book, but it is a new number one. It's Amazing Spider-Man number one. It's a the run that they're having right now, so I might as well have picked it up and see what it's all about. So, and at the same time, it's a, you know, Spider-Man, Let's see how the writing is, how the story goes, and that kind of thing. And the last book, based on the same idea as Spider-Man number one, was Spider-Man number five. And the reason I picked this up is because this is an amazing cover. I did find it at cover price. Uh, obviously, this is not the first print for anybody that knows anything about this book. I was educated about that. It was uh, the second printing. They had a third printing that Spider-Man was blue. 
but I didn't pick that one up because I'm I, I, I like the bread better um, maybe it was a mistake not picking up but I'm not gonna fall into the trap like I said I'm gonna buy whatever I like I do like the white version that's number one but I'm not paying a hundred bucks for that if you know the whole insanity dies down and the prices drop I'll pick it up because it is an iconic cover I will keep this and this is one of my display kind of covers so I like it hopefully the story is good inside it too but if it's not the cover for me is well worth it so that's basically what I got as my first run and the reason that I want to show this off is because one maybe people could guide me into other books that are really cool to get into um, maybe I'm making mistakes by buying some of these books maybe uh, it's more hype than good that's in there I'll find out soon enough once I read them but on another note in a quick note I just want to say that this whole experience at comic book stores is so much different you notice that all these books are in plastics and bags well the reason I have them in plastic and bags is because when I got them off the rack at the LCS all of them were raw with no bags no no backing boards and that's not something I remember from the 90s when I was collecting into the 2000s everything used to be bagged and boarded when I bought it or at the very least bagged um, so that's a little bit of shock factor as far as seeing uh, comics um, out there in the raw and then when I asked him uh, do you bag them he said no we just something like that so I had to buy a whole bunch of loose bagging boards at the shop and put them directly in there to make sure I didn't have any damage to them along transit because this thing is not really going to be very predictable. By the way, this is the one thing that has been constant that gave me nostalgia and I love. The crappy brown paper bags that the comic books use to put the comics in. This is as good as it gets. This brought back memories. So, if you like what you saw, smash a like, subscribe to the channel, agree with what I bought, not agree, got some suggestions, leave a comment, do anything you like, but until the next time, keep collecting, and I'm going to keep learning and recollecting. Thanks, and I'll see you soon.